Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. It's been a little while since I made a video in this series and that's because I was pondering a few things but also mainly working on other stuff, especially blenderizing parts. So that's been occupying a lot of my time. But yeah, uh, my uh, enthusiasm for this situation has sort of uh, been iffy and uh, but uh, I'm, I'm ready to get back to it I'm ready to get back to it and what we need to do I think is I, I think I want to maybe claw something to this uh, to boost it over to Jewel I don't really want to have one of their fuelers it, it, one way or another this is not gonna have enough Delta V to get to Jewel and so I would like we would we need something to help it out getting there and either somebody suggested this go into a higher orbit and then uh, get refueled there. But I think it'd just be better if we attach something to this that can give it the delta V to boost it over. And then it'll still have its delta V uh, when it makes its landing at Lathe and do its thing, hopefully, maybe. So that's the idea. So I'm gonna claw another stage to it. So my initial thought was to have the space plane along the side here and claw it on its bottom or something like that. And then we light the rapiers as well as the engines on this in order to make the transfer. Uh, we would have to light the rapiers in order to maintain balance because if we light just an engine on this side then it'll spin around there's no reaction wheel that would be able to handle that uh, well okay maybe if we pile on quite a lot of them but we don't want to do that and so we needed the cheetahs here in order to provide thrust to counterbalance the rapiers because if it was just the nerve making the transfer then that only has 60 kilonewtons the rapiers have 300 combined but if you take the cheetahs and add a nerve, maybe throw all the cheetahs down a little bit, then it'll balance. But this is all too unwieldy, and I think it'd be better if we just spear the space plane, not use the rapiers, and just make sure that we attach directly on its center of mass, which should be at the cargo bay, hopefully. Uh, I intended to do that. And so instead of having that down there, we'll just have this up here, and... Uh, we will not need the cheetahs necessarily, though maybe that would be helpful. Okay, so realizing that we would also need to use this in order to capture around lathe, I decided to put two nerves and put a little bit more fuel. And so this is what we have, and we've got the reaction, we've got solar panels, we've got RCS for docking and uh, control, and we also have radiators. I angled the radiators. Uh, so that they hopefully won't get blasted by the RCS, but it's sort of a dodgy thing. But anyway, I tried. And so that is our tug to Jewel, basically, to push the space plane over there so we don't have to do something overly fancy, allowing me to do something overly fancy. Well, I mean, we have a recoverable launcher again, but I've tried to make it sturdy. And so we have the Death Claw, <laughs> is what it is. And uh, the thrust weight ratio at sea level 1.3 right now. It's six skippers. I've given them the bare variant. And we have in vacuum 3,841, which may or may not be enough. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, so designed with the intent of either splashing down or sending down on land. The parachutes are on this side, so the engines will land up, which is ideal. And I tried to make this side as flat as possible. And since it's not very tall, I'm hoping that minimizes the chances it will tip over. Uh, there is the matter of the decoupler, which is sort of poking out here. And I didn't want to leave space debris, so I didn't make it a stack separator, though I might reconsider that. Uh, so, yeah, so I sort of tucked it in a little bit in order to minimize how much that would cause things to tip, but we'll see. So, yeah, I've called it the Death Claw because it sort of looked like a claw all on its own, and it seemed like a cool name, so there we have it. We've got 24 parachutes at the bottom. By my calculations, we probably needed 27 to make it perfectly safe, so we'll see how it goes. And, uh, yeah, the controller and the power and the reaction motor are at the bottom shielded by a heat shield with 
uh, less than the full amount of ablator. Okay, so with all that, oh, I should put comms. <laughs> I should put comms on everything, yes. Okay, I think we'll have to go with that. All right, so that being the idea, let's see what happens. So, how will this extremely squished proton go, basically? Um, okay, we'll launch now. Honor uh, SAS on, throttle is up, and launch. That's a delay. Well, it seems vigorous. Obviously, this has a lot of drag. But so far, so good. Looks very Kerbal. Sort of cartoony. I might... Uh, let's just switch off and separate fairings. Well, uh, that gets us pretty close to render range right there. And with enough delta V to deorbit this stage, so yeah, let's just coast over there. Uh, hopefully, we'll have comms. We're about to lose line of sight with KSC, and we still have comms. All right. Okay. Well, it's only a matter of a few seconds here. Gonna kill our relative velocity to the target. Not too close, though. This is a very big stage and everything. Okay, so all the parachutes are settled. That is actually the decoupler we want. Uh, well, we might as well arm the parachutes first and then decouple. And no, you didn't have to make that sound. <laughs> and separate. Okay, the girder segments are a little bit unwieldy, but. Uh, are we approaching from the bottom? I think we are. That's probably for the best. Okay, we've attached. Now, how bad is it to make a transfer like this? That's the question. Uh, I think we'll have to do the burn to get to Jewel in two goes, given the burn time of the nuclear engine. It's sort of balancing out. We'll see. I could release the clamp and try and adjust. That's an option. Oh, I think I'm... Well, okay, I'm RCSing it. Dude, we might as well use the mop propellant while we have it. I think everything in the space plane is topped off now. And we will probably focus on the returning launch stage while this is going around. Well, that's close enough that we could probably do it in dual system. All right. So this is set. Let's focus on the stage. The death claw. It sure looks weird without an actual payload on it, doesn't it? Okay. Not a whole lot of fuel, but enough delta V, certainly. We're already in a very low orbit. A periapsis is 73 kilometers. And we've passed the Woomerang launch site, but we should, probably should, since our periapsis is really low. Um, let's just go to Apoapsis and in the orbit. I'll say 26 kilometers and see what happens. Breaks out. We're going to assume that we don't have comms, so everything else is automated. Yep, we're going right over. I should just stick to the Woomerang launch site as the place to deorbit. Sure, reluctant to slow down, despite the girth of it. Some overheating. Uh, we have lost comms. We might be on land after all, the peninsula there. We're not slowing down that much, though, so we might go right over. Well... 
the survivability of those air brakes is going to be marginal, but I think they're going to hold on. Testing how it balances on land is obviously the more interesting situation, but we'll see. We'll see whether it floats in such a way as to keep the engines out of the water, at least. I'm just pausing quite often. Uh, I'll probably have to restart, but I don't know why. I mean, this is not like I've got a lot of mods. Even uh, my modded installs, like Realism Overall, doesn't do anything like this. Uh, pause. It's really sticky. Very peculiar. Oh, there is a, a... it doesn't float like that. Ah, the engines got drenched anyway. I need floats. I need inflatable floats, guys. Why haven't they already put those in the game, huh? Anyway, recover vessel. They could double as those balloons that, the, or inflatable things that the Mars rovers need. It's a win-win. Okay, back to the mission at hand. Well, that's super peculiar and sort of dubious. Uh, when I got back here, the rapiers were on. I'll be doing that. Uh, maybe I need to change staging or something. We do not need that to happen. Okay, now it's showing. Maybe maybe that was why we weren't seeing Delta V right. So, well, we definitely have enough for transfer and capture around Lathe. We just have to wait for the node. This is sort of an interesting view. Uh, we've got this whole contraption, but there is the shadow of the moon there. Uh, an eclipse just finished. Uh, it was diminishing our electric charge briefly, but no problems. But yep, there's the moon shadow. And we are approaching our node. I'll toss on the RCS as well. Um, also can't clip the atmosphere too much. Okay, I think we've used enough mod propellant for this sort of thing. Uh, might have to change the clamp positioning, but I think the reaction wheel is good enough. I haven't actually extended the radiators yet. Might not have been necessary. I guess maybe RCS it a little bit. We want to get to lathe. Should not be hard. Okay, well, we have a lathe encounter like that. So that would bring us into dual orbit. Uh, we can go as low around lathe as we can. 65. Let's just go for that first and then we'll work on whatever else we have to work on when we get there because Maybe we'll manually capture around Lathe using the Delta V we have, or maybe we'll do some slingshots around planets to figure that out. But all right, uh, we are going to time warp to the node. Could do it with just RCS, but let's take the risk of reigniting again, just a little bit. Well, that was reasonably precise. Not delete maneuver node control lock because we don't have comms. Great. Oh. Okay, that brought our lathe periapsis down. Okay, 88 is fine for now, I think. But yeah, that's annoying. Stupid scientist. Anyway, <laughs> scientists can't delete maneuver node. What if they're an astrophysicist? Hmm? Anyway. Oh, we've got some signal intermittently. At least I can get rid of that maneuver node. And verify our approach to Lathe. Still seems okay. But we have to land at a very particular location, don't we? Not the Paul Driller probe. Well, all right. <laughs> Set us target the real mount. Drogue shoot, I suppose. Um, well, this inclination would eventually be able to reach it, so I guess we're okay. Continuing. 
There's a lot to communicate with or through around late, uh, around Jewel in general. Uh, there's stuff around Paul helping out, stuff around Lath, so... Maybe it wouldn't have been too bad without our scientist, but... Best not to take any chance. Well, okay, fine. We're taking a chance with the scientist. Okay, I think it's time to see how much it would take to just manually t make orbit around Leith. 500, well, I mean, we would like to get into a low orbit to start off. Hmm, so maybe we'll do this and then swing by again on a second round. Okay, swing by Leith. In Lathe SOI, we have made it with Luton. But we are proceeding around in the hopes of getting a gravity assist again. Very watercolory, or yeah, sort of watercolory look to it from a distance. Okay, so, targeting Leif again, now that we're out of its SOI. Uh, what should we do? Should we do anything here? I think we should just wait. But then other moons could come into play. Oh, maybe that's not... Yeah, that seems cheaper. I want to see what we're actually doing at Apoapsis, though. It's still 700. But it's only a 16 meter per second burn at Apoapsis, so it's doable. And then, well, then it's a waiting game. Okay, we'll just do this with RCS. Okay, doing this correction. Well, let's try 62 kilometers. And then add maneuver, capture. Got 771, it says over there. That doesn't quite get us to a low, low orbit. And Leif is completely enshrouded in darkness right now. So, something like that. A little bit high there. We'll have to think about that. It could be a good thing to air brake a little, uh, but we, we don't really have a setup for that right now. Let's make sure that... Oh, we do have this locked fuel here. Hmm. Uh, everything's topped off in the space plane, right? Well, I mean, there's nothing else to do with uh, this pellant, so we might as well unlock that. Oh, I need to get a time warp. Now we have plenty. Okay, well. I should have put one of those fuel dump valves for the oxidizer. Okay, so that's okay then. And here we go again. And burn. Ooh, pitch control. Well. It can hold it, I think. So we'll have to wait a little while for <laughs> the real mount drogue shoot to be under our orbit. I uh, presume that that's the location. Yeah, that's that beach there. That's going to be tough any way you look at it. I think for everybody's sanity, I'm going to quick save. <laughs> uh, Lace rescue attempt. One, two, uh, well, we'll just call it a late rescue attempt. Okay. I've tried rescuing things from Lathe a lot. <laughs> you might say it's my favorite thing to do in stock, iron well, not ironic, sarcastically. There we go, sarcastically, yes. Unfortunately, since we're not equatorial, I don't really know what kind of I mean, it seems like we stopped really quickly and we fell short last time. 
uh, yeah, I like, again, I don't have trajectories or anything, so it's tough to judge since I don't have that much experience with Lathe. Okay, I'm gonna decouple from... Maybe I should just deorbit this. I don't know what else it's gonna be doing. Yeah, we could refuel it, but there's a whole bunch of other stuff just like it around. Okay, well... Let me get that solar panel in. Close the cargo bay. Release. Okay, RCS away. Burn. I guess we'll save it after all. Well, Luton is thrilled. Probably won't be able to hold the pitch very well. The periapsis is too far, I think. Yeah, I think I'm just going to overshoot. We'll probably have to use the quick save. We should have done that earlier. Okay, okay. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> Again, just lack of experience with this. Let's try this. Long rescue. Hmm. Still might overshoot. We'll see. But we'll just decouple and get on with it. Okay, and no, not just straight prograde. That might be dangerous. Or inevitable. Uh, activate the engines again. And we definitely don't want them in closed cycle. And we are here now. So is that the right sort of path? Well, we'll see. I think I shouldn't aim for too much drag yet. Better to have too much energy than too little. We had too little last time. We're a little bit off. We're quite a ways to the east. Gonna try and turn. Yeah, let's just fly. I don't I don't think we need to worry about slowing down really. Okay, maybe slowing down a bit might help here. Trying to turn as well. We can see the sight down there. Well, shoot brakes. Probably going to have to make a U-turn. I think we can make it down there. But then there's the whole matter of the slope and the fact that our brakes weren't that great last time. <laughs> There's a whole potential of sliding into water problem. Actually, having had some way of transferring resources between the vessels might have made things easier. We're not flying super duper right now. Mm, definitely not pulling up very well. It'll happen, it's just taking a lot. Some combustion may in fact be necessary. Not the radio mount parachute, come on. Not the cubic octagonal strut. Oh, please tell me she's still there. <laughs> I should have had her plant a flag. There's definitely a plane there. Don't want to be too low, we do need to give the parachutes an opportunity to do their thing. But I need to get below these clouds. 
our Kerbal does have a rover. Potentially. I think it'd be better if we were at the top of the mountain. But then can our Kerbal get to the top of the mountain? Nice slopes, by the way. I mean, I feel a lot more comfortable sort of rolling in this direction. I don't know how bumpy it actually is. It looks a bit bumpy. But it also looks relatively flat. It looks like a ramp up right there. That's nice. Again, we have to give the parachutes a chance. Uh, I think the beach is over there, and I think I'd rather land over here. Um, open. Okay, there we go. We are parking here, folks. Now, balance. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, this is not the right way around. Come on, reaction wheel. Nope. Oh, ooh, rough, rough, rough. But, but successful. But successful. Okay, keeping the brakes on. Uh, we might as well get the solar panel out. We're here! We're here, folks. <laughs> now, um, given that we're here, let's see if we can get our other Kerbal over. Here we go. Spirit of Gin. Leave Seat. Does the rover get enough power around here? Hmm, doesn't seem so. And we have none of that stuff. And then those tires. Repair from EVA. Okay. Long is an engineer. Well, let's try. One repair kit required. Well, shoot. So these aren't powerful enough, but we could slap something else on. Okay, you know what? We'll leave troubleshooting for next time. I think we'll leave it here. And the question will be, can I figure out how to get flung over just at 10 kilometers? I mean, she could walk, but it would be take a lot of time, obviously. So, that is the goal, and then there's the whole matter of whether Puck 8 can actually get back into orbit. At least it's intact, which is more than we can say for this plane, but it's still a question mark. So, with that, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.